Okay, first I want to say thanks for all your support and the fact that our channel is growing and we are seeing, you guys seem to be liking the content that we're putting out there, which is a great for us because we definitely enjoy coming out here and doing these kinds of things. So, we'd like to ask something from you. And what is what we'd like to ask, Julie? We want you to choose subscribe. Yes. So hit that button to get more of the good stuff. All right, well, maybe not quite that way, but please hit the button. <laughs> Mahalo. It's Eric and Julie Zimelis and we're with 365 Hawaii for all those people that don't know us out there Most of you do though. Yeah, so and we are uh, at a really cool campground on the Hamakua coast uh, the big island of Hawaii and uh, We decided to come up here uh, over the Christmas uh, weekend to kind of get away from the world and uh, Come up here and just kind of like do some nature bathing and uh, kind of connect to the land and the uh, you know, just to the beauty of uh, the space, right? Yeah, we were going to take you, because uh, this has got some, uh, it's a beautiful um, old growth forest here that has uh, it's got some beautiful things, and we thought it would be interesting to take you guys along on that. But when we got here, we started talking to the caretaker, and he had an interesting story that kind of gave us another thought of maybe we should cover in our video. Mm -hmm. So uh, yesterday when he was walking by, I said, uh, hello. <laughs> and uh, we had been smelling um, like propane, um, and he came by and he said, hey, have you gone inside the uh, mess hall? Uh, and I said, no, because uh, it says because of COVID that they won't let us in. And he said, well, somebody must have gone in the last 24 hours because somebody blew out the, um, um, uh, pilot lights. the pilot lights on the ovens. Is and I said, well, maybe because the wind came up. And he said, no, the only way that would happen is if somebody had to go in there and actually blow them out. So I just said, well, you know, there are things that happen on this island that sometimes are not caused by humans. And he said, yeah, you got that right. And uh, and he said, definitely, that could be a possibility for yeah. what happened up there because it is sort of a, 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 you could say, slightly haunted here with a lot of uh, ancient presence as well. Right. What it is. And I said, well, is that, is that like, it was that kind of like mischievously not nice. And he said, you just have to show respect. So then he came over and we started talking uh, about respect and some of the uh, cultural values mm -hmm. around energies. <laughs> and uh, then we started thinking about, wow, this whole campground kind of has that feeling. And it, hence, we wanted to talk to you guys. Yes, it has a sort of a, uh, you can <laughs> feel ancient being, being here. And so we thought we'd go into a little bit more today in some of uh, what Hawaii is versus the mainland in terms of the differences of it. And uh, so that's our plan. So, but we're going to do that. And we're going to do that while we're hiking so we can kind of give you guys some of the beauty of the, of the space as well. Some of the stories of, of Hawaii as well. At least from our perspective. Yeah, from our perspective. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so when people say that a space is highly energetic, that usually means that there's some ancient Hawaiian energy walking around. <laughs> That's what that means. All right, so let's continue on. Okay. Yeah, that. Okay. One thing they say about East Hawaii is called changeable weather, that it rains really hard, sometimes it gets sunny. Well, we are on the Hamakua coast where when it comes in, it just stays in. And so uh, you wouldn't believe this, but less than an hour ago, I was out on my hammock over there and I actually had to get off the hammock because I was so hot because the sun was beating on me and came in here and uh, now we have this. Changeable weather. Really heavy downpour. Where am I hiking? I'm finding my wine now. Yes, I am. Okay. We're gonna go for a run today because there's lots of different parts in this park that are just really cool. And the sun's just coming up, so it should be a lot of fun. So let's take you along. Okay, so this is sort of the end of our little run today. And with as much rain as we got last night, we were expecting this creek to be completely full. And it was pretty dry, so obviously it went other places or it went through and got done quickly, but surprising. Why, Julie, looks like you're enjoying yourself in the hammock here. 
is the best day ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> day two, sitting out underneath a blue sky and watching the light play in the trees and being one with nature and uh, kind of thinking about, uh, you know, what the Hawaiians say about uh, valuing land, that the, uh, the land is, uh, you know, perpetuated in righteousness. And so uh, it gives us a chance to kind of think about really about being here in Hawaii and really sitting down and enjoying it and uh, kind of understanding it a little bit deeper. So we're about halfway through our hike. We're about a half a mile up the mountain at this point. And we decided to kind of just sit down and have a little chatty chat with you guys real quick. Uh, one of the things that uh, we wanted to tell you guys a little bit about was the concept of being called to Hawaii. And um, when uh, I started doing my book on how to move to Kona, I definitely had this feeling that um, I had a message to put it in the book about the concept of people feeling energetic connection to this island. And when I did that, I was kind of afraid that people would think I was strange and weird. And what I heard was, write it anyway. So that's kind of why we're talking about this on video now. Yeah, you guys might think they were a little nutty, but you know what? It's true and it's happening. And the call to the Hawaiian Island experience um, has been going on since we started moving here. When people started telling us why they came, so many people said they felt called to be here. And so many people said when they got off the plane, they felt like they were home. And I even wrote in my first book back in, you know, 2014 that when we lived in Silicon Valley I never once had anyone ever say they were called to Santa Clara County and nobody ever said boy when I come to San Jose I feel like I'm home <laughs> so all right well, I can I can I can I can fill in a little story on that one uh, I grew up in the South Bay you know San Jose area for uh, for we were there for 30 something years and I never said oh my gosh I feel like I'm completely attached to this to this space it was just sort of a, a place where it was sort of I consider it sort of a, a flat space and I, I never felt wow this is great uh, but it was what we've always done and I grew up there so it was just kind of normal but after coming to Hawaii our, we spent a fir our first year we spent one year here and it was just like wow and it was felt so much better and deeper and, and real compared to what it did over there yeah. and so we definitely understand that and it, it's been nice to have that feeling and to feel like you're home you know what I mean even though we might not look like we come from the island yeah. at least we feel like we come yeah, from the yeah. island yeah yeah and uh, when uh, I've talked to some of my spiritual uh, Hawaiian friends they say um, uh, people might have had past lives here right yeah and that when they come back here they feel like they're home because they have been here before so again if you believe it or not uh, people when I say that they say that would make sense about why I feel in certain places on this island that I connect deeper um, and also uh, one thing about Eric he has a little bit more um, he can connect it to energies a little bit better. Intuitive, I would yeah, say. Yeah, intuitive. So yes. I actually, when people say they're called to Hawaii, I'm like, oh, let me guess. You're intuitive, <laughs> right? Um, so uh, when uh, I worked in Santa Cruz for a while, I remember being able to come up out of the Silicon Valley and come up into the Redwoods mm -hmm. and then drop down towards the ocean. And you could feel this like <gasps> feeling about getting away from the crazy of all those people just chasing the almighty dollar who are not spiritually connected to anything and coming up into the mountains and that's when I knew that there's energy in natural spaces around trees. And when we came to the Hawaiian island, um, and I'm saying islands too, because it's very, very energetic on this island, but I've talked to a lot of people and they say they can feel it on a lot of the different islands. Yep. But there's definitely something special here. Yes. Right? Yep. And that's why we feel connected. And that's why, uh, you know, I think a lot of people have said to themselves, as soon as they got off that plane and they touched the tarmac and they felt this jolt of energy and they felt like they had to do what they could to stay here because they wanted to more, feel more connected and uh, be happier. So there we go. So we're talking about energetic spaces and places. And one of the things that we want to talk to you guys a little bit about was Keaho, where we spent six years of our lives living in a condo, right? Yep. And uh, Keaho is an interesting place because uh, it was the birthplace of King Kamehameha III. And it always had, had, had a, uh, it was always, always a large population down in that thing. And I would say that the energies down there are always very strong. So 
what it seems to happen, at least from my perspective, is that it, the, it, the, the land is almost holding these, these spirits there and the spiritual energy. So it's a very charged area. So we would have friends that would come by and they would have the most emotional vacation you could possibly imagine. They would be up, they would be down. It was the worst day of their lives. It was the best day of their life. And it was just sort of funny because it almost exaggerated your emotions. And then we're like, oh man, they'd leave and they'd be like, oh, that was probably the worst vacation that they ever had. How could they, you know, that wasn't very fun. And they call us up a week later and say, I got the most out of that that I've ever got anywhere else, in, you know, in, in any of the places I've gone. Right. So it, it, it's, it's a mixed bag, right? I mean, and you know, it, essentially it's a kind of a clean, cleaning place when the energies are higher, it tends to, you can't, leave some of your your baggage of the, of the lower frequencies right and um, it's funny because uh, the longer I live here and I keep talking to people who uh, say how energetic mm -hmm. Keiho is in fact the gentleman that we met here who is uh, Hawaiian uh, was talking specifically about Keiho and things happening there and um, I told him I had a friend that was psychic and she said um, Keiho is a very crowded place and I said, there's not that many people there. And she said, it's not the people that are living that I'm talking about. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Uh, so, uh, and if you talk to anybody here that's been here for very long and you say Keiho, they'll just tell you. It's, there's just... Uh, there's a lot, a lot of there's action. There's a lot of action going on there. Yeah. And, uh, and the reason I want to share it to you is just that it's, you know, just, uh, just to show you that there's a... That there's a lot happening around here. Yeah. And, and all you, if you're intuitive or you just sort of open your your yourself up to, you know, that, that life is different here than on the mainland. And you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like places where the Civil War was back in the uh, on the East Coast that, you know, have had a lot of people and a lot of things happen there. Um, and but here, you know, we've there's been it's it, the land has gone back, you know, thousands of years. Right. And so. There's been thousands of people who've been killed in um, battles. Um, on the land, especially down in Keho. Yeah. Right? And, uh, you know, we were, uh, I, when I was talking to my guy at the campground, um, when he said, he basically walked by and basically had a comment about how, it, you know, it was very energetic and I think he used the word haunted. I'm like, hey, 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 come back here and tell me a little bit more. And he basically said, all the land in Hawaii has had something happen on it yeah. and that the whole island has energy pockets, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, all you got to do though is be there with respect. And I, I think right? that's I think that's a key thing is that um, when coming here, respect is a, uh, is is greatly needed. Um, we life is not the same here as the mainland. It, it is quite a bit different, and you know, trying to bring the mainland here just, just doesn't work. It, it's it's much better to assimilate to this culture mm -hmm. than it is trying to create a, a, a little mainland here for doing that. So right. that's part of our our job too is just you know fill everybody in and that you know it, it it's a it's a beautiful way to live too. It's it's much more relaxing than the. Uh, Cutthroat. We were just talking about the, uh, you know, uh, the doggy dog, the doggy me, dog. Me, I'm gonna me. Me. I'm gonna <laughs> you know, uh, you know, we were talking to that in, in, uh, on the mainland. Um, you don't ask for permission to step into spaces. So um, Hawaiians have a thing called they call protocol, and they basically do a, a chant or oli um, before they enter spaces to basically ask permission of the land and the elders that might still be there. And it's a it's a it's a it's an intentional experience of gratitude and humbleness and respectfulness yeah. that they have. And I was just thinking about this that almost everybody who comes off a plane at the K at the uh, Cone Airport, yeah. it would be great if all of them were basically told, as you enter this land, come with respect and humbleness. Yeah. And I know that we can't tell everyone at the airport before you walk onto this this land um, that you need to kind of like take a chill pill and kind of let your feet sink in and feel the energy and to know of the history and just to be able to come here with a deep breath and have intention of just listening and just appreciating it and come with gratitude because it's a, it's a space that the Hawaiians, we were talking to, again to this gentleman yesterday, he said this land is not theirs, they're borrowing this land. Caretakers of it. They're caretakers of it. Yeah. And he said that's one thing, it's an interesting mainland concept of owning land, um, that these guys basically have always said, when Tutu Pele comes and takes the land in creation, they just clean up their house and they let her take it and say, thank you. Mm -hmm. And they go to someplace else. So it's a whole different way of experience, you know, real estate, where they don't own the land. And when you take it that way, and anything happens to you, you kind of just say, it is what it is. Yeah. And it's a nice way to live your life. Okay, so the question is, why are we bringing this up in a video? And a lot of people don't experience the energies here in Hawaii, and it's no big deal. And this, of course, this video is probably not for them. 
But for those people that are sensitive and say, oh my gosh, what is going on and why do I feel this in the, bear, in, in the big island? This is kind of what we're trying to convey is that there's more here than just what you see. You don't get a chance to do this in Nefancona sometimes, so it's nice to be out here and uh, just enjoying the peacefulness of this uh, beautiful area. Yep, and it didn't rain yet today, so it's 2 o'clock and no rain yet, so that's pretty good because, as you saw yesterday, that was not very good. No. <laughs> Definitely made for an <laughs> indoor kind of activity, which is not good for hiking. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And yep. uh, we'll go And don't oh, forget. Yep. Oh, jeez, I forgot already. We offer resources for people uh, if you are interested in trying to figure out the maze, if you feel that you might be called to the island, uh, that we might be able to help you out with uh, all of you. Would you like to explain a little more, Julie, since you're so good at it? <laughs> so we have different kinds of resources. I've got my How to Move Your Kona book, the... Um, uh, Insider's Guide to Buying Real Estate on the Big Island of Hawaii. I wrote a memoir about our first year here so you can kind of get a feeling for it. We also have our 365 Kona Newbies group. We have the 365 Hilo Newbies group. We've also got the um, 365 Kona's I'm Moving to the Big Island Buying a Home group. So all these great things and our blogs. You can go to Move to Hawaii 365, all kinds of different kinds of things I've written about. Uh, are you the right person who needs to be here? And uh, different kinds of uh, posts about... Uh, just life on the islands. So um, if you want to do that, do that. Or you can also contact us directly yep. if you're thinking about maybe purchasing a home. Right? There we go. Yep. Yes. So we can do it all. We're the one-stop shop for all your re resources and needs to move to the island. Quite a lot when you say it like that, man. It's like you yeah, rattle off quite well. <laughs> all right. Aloha. Aloha.